Francis had heard this voice from the crucifix of San Damiano, Francis, go and repair my house, which, as you see, is falling into ruin. Francis then begins to repair the church of San Damiano, but he also repaired other churches and restored them. One of them was the little church of St. Mary of the Angels, which he called the little portion, the Portiuncula. That church that Francis restored with his own hands is still there today inside the large basilica of St. Mary of the Angels. There's something profound going on inside as he's building up um, a, a deeper sense of his vocation. And that comes to fruition, I think, at St. Mary of the Angels when in February of 1208 he's at Mass, it's the Feast of St. Matthias, he listens to the scriptures. And I'm going to have to paraphrase it. If you want to be my disciples, take everything that you have, sell it, give it away. Take nothing for the future, just a walking staff, no sandals, and go about proclaiming that the reign of God is in your midst. And Francis sort of claps his hands in excitement, and he says, that's what I want with all my heart. And... Uh, Within just a couple of months, his first companion joins him. We are celebrating a Kairos moment for the Franciscan family. 800 years since Francis first embraced wholeheartedly the gospel path. Our general minister, Brother Jose Carvalho, tells us as friars that this anniversary is not about celebrating ourselves. He says rather, that this anniversary is, quote, a providential time to nourish by means of the liberating offer of the gospel, our divided, unequal, and hungry for meaning world as Francis and Claire of Assisi did in their time, unquote. When I think about what happened for Francis 800 years ago and how he heard God calling to him, reaching out to him through the San Damiano cross. I think for Francis, uh, it began an, uh, a journey and an adventure for his whole life. When celebrating the 800th, we're celebrating our call in the spirit of Francis to fall in love with the gospel, fall in love with Jesus, and to try to incarnate it in our daily living as friars, as a fraternity, and try to uh, incarnated in our ministry to others. In the following of Christ, we see what Francis was all about. The most important virtue is charity, is love. And that was certainly true in Francis' case. And everything has to come out of that. Everything has to come out of charity. So whether it's poverty, chastity, obedience, it's all a freeing so we can love. We're not to be teachers of the law, we are to be ministers of mercy, uh, forgiveness, reconciliation, and peace. When the small community of men around St. Francis of Assisi numbered 12, they set out two by two into the world to share their experience of the incarnate love. How quickly and how joyfully people received the friars and their message. I believe it was not a time too different from our very own today. Recently, I celebrated the birthday of an old friend, and I reflected on the importance of celebrating not only his life, but the importance of possibilities. We do not know what God has in store for us, but with faith and trust, we believe that God will not lead us astray. Need and hope brought thousands of German immigrants to Cincinnati in the middle of the 19th century. Our Catholic faith sustained them on their journey and nourished them as they planted themselves in the rich soil of America. To minister to their needs, Cincinnati Archbishop John Baptist Purcell called upon the Franciscan friars of the Austrian Tyrol. Summoning the grace of their own gospel origins, they left behind safety and security and became pioneers themselves. At the Northern Liberties, 
where Irish Catholic immigrants first built a tiny frame church. Archbishop Purcell offered the friars a place to permanently establish the order in America with a friary, seminary, a parish church, and school. In return, the small band of missionary friars took the risk to form a community which they graciously named after the patron of their archbishop, the custody of St. John the Baptist. With hearts that surely longed for their Tyrolese homes, these pioneer friars nevertheless wholeheartedly embraced a new home and allowed the gospel journey to advance. Well, I think the 800th is wrapped up in and, and uh, takes flesh in our own history as a province uh, coming out of the friars from Tyrol. And uh, they're coming here, you know, alone. I'm sure they felt lost, homesick, uh, and all that goes with it. But they came for the poor, you know, the immigrants, uh, the people who were searching for a new beginning, a new life, a new home. They were leaving everything behind, and they knew that. They left family behind. They left their friends behind. They left the things that they were accustomed to behind. Uh, People in Germany and uh, particularly Austria uh, didn't know what was going on in the United States. After they came over here, they were called back and they appealed. The bishop wrote and, and to the minister general and, and all kind of things happened because they dissented. Some friars felt like we should be able to live our lives in the United States as a, a, a different kind of Franciscan. They saw the importance of the work they were doing, and then they were permitted to stay. So I think that was a beautiful thing. When I think about um, some of our younger friars that are interested in living this life uh, radically, my hope is to have them uh, experience our charism, experience the love that God is giving to us, know our tradition, and hope that they can uh, launch off in their own direction. There's a strong pull within, uh, within my own vocational call, I believe, as a friar, to do um, itinerant living. And I really believe that the, the, those who have gone before us, um, who have lived that itinerant dream of the friar's minor, are, are going to call me to live my own itinerant dream. From Cincinnati, the ministry of the friars spread across the Midwest and South as local bishops sought their help. The pioneer friars shaped a new Franciscan response to the needs of the American church and staffed parishes and schools, served as chaplains to the sick and in the military, became communicators through the printed word and launched their own missionary journeys to the American Southwest, where they served the Navajo and Pueblo peoples and Hispanic Catholics, to African American parishes in the Midwest and South, to China, Japan, the Philippines, Africa, and Jamaica, to Appalachian parishes in Eastern Kentucky. Like the Tyrolese pioneers, Slovak friars also pioneered ministry to American immigrants of another generation in the 20th century. They founded parishes and preached missions and spread the word in print. Now those friars who have inherited the adventurous spirit which motivated their forebears face the challenges of the 21st century church and world with its complex reality of birth and death, despair and hope, pain and possibility. <laughs>